If there's one thing every space company dreams of, it's landing on the moon. That goal has always been the ultimate symbol of technological achievement and national pride. But today, the company everyone has their eyes on isn't NASA. It's SpaceX. In just over two decades, SpaceX has gone from a small, risky startup working out of a warehouse to a $400 billion space giant that has completely reshaped the space industry. And the most surprising part? They're now exploring the possibility of landing Crew Dragon, the same spacecraft that takes astronauts to the International Space Station. It might sound crazy at first, using a capsule designed for low Earth orbit to go all the way to the moon. But this idea isn't as far-fetched as it seems. And if they pull it off, it could change everything about how we think of moon travel. It's been over 50 years since humans last walked on the lunar surface. The last Apollo mission, Apollo 17, took place in 1972. Since then, there have been countless proposals and government programs promising a return. But none have made it, each time something goes wrong. NASA has spent decades trying to build a sustainable moon program. Their current effort, Artemis, aims to land humans back on the moon this decade using the Orion spacecraft and the Space Launch System, or SLS, a massive rocket built to rival the Saturn V. But Artemis has been plagued by delays and eye-watering costs. That's where SpaceX comes in. Unlike NASA, SpaceX operates like a fast-moving tech company. If something fails, they fix it and try again, sometimes within weeks. Their reusable rocket technology, which many once called impossible, has now become the standard for cost-effective spaceflight. And now they might have found a shortcut for returning humans to the moon. The Crew Dragon already has a proven track record. Since its first crewed flight in 2020, it safely carried dozens of astronauts to and from the International Space Station. More importantly, it's already flying regularly, something that can't be said for NASA's Orion capsule. So how could a spacecraft built for low Earth orbit make it to the moon? To understand that, we need to look at how Dragon started. Back in 2014, NASA asked SpaceX to build a new spacecraft that could take astronauts to the International Space Station. That's how Crew Dragon was created. It was an improved version of SpaceX's old cargo capsule and quickly became known for its safety and reliability. Over the years, SpaceX worked on different versions of Dragon for different missions. There's Dragon XL, which will one day carry supplies to the moon's gateway station, and there was even a red Dragon version that was planned for Mars. These ideas showed that Dragon's design could be adapted for many purposes. So, the idea of sending Dragon to the moon isn't as crazy as it sounds. Another version of the plan suggests pairing Crew Dragon with Starship, SpaceX's massive next-generation spacecraft that's designed for deep space travel. In this version, Dragon wouldn't go all the way to the moon by itself. Instead, it would handle the first part of the journey from Earth to low Earth orbit, while Starship would take care of the rest. Here's how it would work. Crew Dragon, which sits on top of a Falcon 9 rocket, would launch astronauts into orbit just like it does for ISS missions. Once in orbit, instead of docking with the space station, it would rendezvous with Starship, a vehicle nearly 10 times larger. The astronauts would transfer from Dragon into Starship, which would then fire its engines to leave Earth's orbit and head toward the moon. To give you an idea of the scale, Crew Dragon is about 8 meters tall and 4 meters wide, roughly the size of a small delivery truck. Starship, on the other hand, towers at 50 meters tall, with a diameter of 9 meters. It's so large it could fit several Crew Dragons inside its cargo bay. Starship also has an enormous payload capacity of up to 100 to 150 tons, compared to Dragon's modest 6-ton limit. In this plan, Starship would act as a space tug, ferrying astronauts from Earth orbit to lunar orbit and back, without actually landing on the moon itself. Once the lunar mission is complete, the crew would transfer back into Dragon, separate from Starship, and re-enter Earth's atmosphere using Dragon's powerful heat shield and parachutes. On paper, this setup sounds elegant, and much cheaper than launching everything separately. But turning that idea into reality isn't simple. Crew Dragon was never designed to dock with something the size of Starship. 
Its current docking system was built specifically for the International Space Station, which means it would need a new docking adapter compatible with Starship's airlock or pressurized section. That's a big redesign. Then there's space volume and life support. Dragon can carry up to four astronauts comfortably, but its interior space is only about nine cubic meters, just enough for short trips of a few days. A journey to the moon and back could take up to two weeks. But even if Dragon is upgraded for lunar missions, Starship itself still needs a lot of work. SpaceX has been testing Starship aggressively since its first orbital test flight in 2023. Up until now, SpaceX has tested catching the booster using the giant mechanical arms on the launch tower, known as Mekazilla, and they're getting closer to pulling it off. For Flight 11 and beyond, the long-term plan is to use those same arms to catch the Starship upper stage as it returns from orbit. If this works, it would be a historic first, marking the beginning of true two-stage reusability. Of course, that's easier said than done. The upper stage re-enters the atmosphere at around 27,000 kilometers per hour, far faster and hotter than the booster. SpaceX has been improving its heat shield tiles, refining the Raptor engines for more reliable reignition, and upgrading its software for better control during re-entry. And the reason SpaceX is pushing so hard for reusability is simple. Money. Even with the smaller Falcon 9 rocket, reusability has already proven how much cost it can save. A brand new Falcon 9 booster costs around $50 million. But when it's reused, the cost per launch drops dramatically to as low as $15 million. SpaceX has boosters that have flown more than 20 times, and every reuse saves tens of millions of dollars that would otherwise be spent building new rockets. Now scale that up to Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built. Each Starship system, including the Super Heavy booster and upper stage, is estimated to cost well over $100 million to build. Launching one and throwing it away every time like NASA does with SLS would be completely unsustainable. For comparison, a single SLS launch costs around $2 billion because nothing is reused. If SpaceX succeeds in catching and reusing both stages of Starship, they could reduce launch costs from hundreds of millions to just a few million dollars per flight. Elon Musk has even claimed that, once perfected, Starship could bring the cost per kilogram to orbit down from roughly $2,000 today to under $10. SpaceX has been constantly improving its heat shield tiles, making them more durable and easier to replace between flights. At the same time, the company has been upgrading its Raptor engines, moving from the earlier Raptor 2 design to the newly developed Raptor 3. While the Raptor 2 could produce about 230 tons of thrust, Raptor 3 pushes that to around 280 tons, a massive increase that gives Starship far more power during both launch and landing. But it's not just about raw thrust. The new Raptor 3 engines are also simpler, lighter, and cheaper to build. During recent static fire tests, SpaceX showed off how stable the Raptor 3 performs. Musk even mentioned that Raptor 3 has achieved a record-breaking thrust-to-weight ratio, making it one of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.